fossils are responsible for a huge amount of what we know about Earth's history. How exactly does something fossilize? What kinds of fossils are there? Are some things more likely to fossilize than others? Let's find out. A fossil is any physical evidence of prehistoric life. It's not exactly bone, but rather rock that looks like bone. <laughs> Misleading, I know. Let's begin with body fossils. These come from an organism's hard parts, such as bones, teeth, and shells, which undergo a process called petrification. Here's how it works. Introducing our lizard friend, Kevin. Unfortunately, Kevin has died. When things die, they often quickly decompose. Kevin's soft parts will rot away. Rotting is actually caused by bacteria eating the body. Before his bones rot, Kevin must be covered by sediment. This is because once buried, the oxygen in the air can't reach him. Since the bacteria eating Kevin is fueled by oxygen, they stop eating him when he becomes buried. This allows Kevin's remains to exist long enough to fossilize. Over millions of years, layers of sediment build up on top of Kevin. Water seeps down into the ground and eventually into his bones. Bones have lots of really tiny pores. Water enters these pores, carrying with it dissolved minerals. These minerals get left behind in the pores. As the bones slowly decay, they're replaced by minerals from the water. Eventually, there's a Kevin-shaped rock. After thousands to millions of years, a new fossil is born. With the help of plate movement, weathering, and erosion, Kevin moves up to the surface and is exposed. Aside from body fossils, there are also mold and cast fossils. Sometimes, water completely dissolves a bone or shell that has been buried, leaving behind a hole in its shape. If the hole is never filled, that's called a mold fossil. However, if sediment fills the hole and is turned to stone with pressure, that's called a cast fossil. This usually happens with shells. Trace fossils are evidence that something alive had been there. Footprints form holes in the ground that can be filled and fossilized. Skin might imprint on the rock around it. Dung can also undergo petrification, becoming what is called a coprolite. However, one very important thing you must know is that the fossil record isn't what you think it is. Very few things ever fossilize, and some things are more likely to fossilize than others. Four things make you a good candidate for fossilization. Number one, hard parts. Bones and teeth rot slower. Number two, size. Big bones and shells are more resistant. They're also easier for scientists to find. Number three, habitat. Shallow seas, swamps, and areas near rivers make it easy to be covered by sediment. Very few fossils have ever been found from rainforests, deserts, and mountaintops. Number four, age. Older fossils are more likely to be destroyed before we ever even find them. When trying to figure out what life was like millions of years ago, paleontologists find a lot of gaps. We have likely only discovered a tiny fraction of the species that have lived in the past. It really makes you wonder, is T-Rex really such a special super predator or did it just get lucky? I suppose history is written by the ones who fossilize.